Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels for ESA Web TV, and we are standing on the sidelines of Fee Week. And the topic of the day is the future of Earth observation or future EO. Now, I'm standing with Jan Prox from Alto University in Finland. Now, future EO, that's not only about technologies, it's also about future practices for Earth observation. In your opinion, what are the most important prospects for the future of Earth observation? So we are standing at the moment in a, in a situation where we're starting to measure the heartbeat of the entire planet in real time. And this has been brought and made possible by small satellites, because small satellite is the, is the only technology we afford to launch in massa to space. So we have a lot of more sensors nowadays coming, a lot of more methods, more parameters to measure, and we really start to understand how Earth is functioning, and we are able to take also measures if something goes wrong, like climate change. Now, what are the advantages of small satellites for communities like students? Uh, small satellites provide affordable, very quick platform for, for developing technologies and uh, applying practices which are more common in software engineering, for example. So the developing pace is much more quicker nowadays. Young people embrace this kind of like agile, fast approach. And this also has been utilized in universities as a development and teaching platform. And it has been producing marvelous results. So uh, the whole scene, the whole sensor scene, application scene, it's, it's, uh, it's booming because, because more and more students are excited about space, excited about Earth observation, and, and we have much more opportunities than ever before. I imagine there are also opportunities for the commercial sector with small satellites. Yeah, this is one of the, of the significant changes uh, because nowadays the small satellites can provide a platform with a lower investment level and lower start investments. So there is much many more uh, possible application areas which are also commercially viable. And that's why we see a lot of startup companies who are producing their own satellites and starting their own services with these satellites. And it seems this is totally feasible in a commercial level, supported by Copernicus program, big public programs. Now we have also private programs which are complementing this constant data flow coming from space. So we see a lot of opportunities, but it's not always smooth sailing. What about the challenges? Of course, we have a lot of different problems to tackle as well. Uh, one of the, of the key problems is, of course, space debris. If we are uh, launching more and more satellites, we have to take also uh, we have to take care of, of, the, of the highways we are using in the space. So we have to clean up the, the highway after the usage. Uh, we have to also uh, take more into account how to share and how to use the frequencies. So, Electromagnetic spectrum is a, is a resource we have to share. Uh, and there are many smaller technical problems we have to we tackle. Uh, for example, getting more venture capital funds uh, in Europe, uh, how to get like uh, better education, more people excited, and especially also more usage uh, for ex existing data like Copernicus data. Well, Jan, thank you so much for joining us today. And to our viewers, keep an eye on the future of EO happening in real time on our website, www.isa.int.